it's Dave welcome back to my channel so the last couple of days after I posted the base 6 video a lot of people have asked me how uh, back in the saddles actually played so I thought I would do a quick little lesson on it on how it's played Joe Perry on the record used a base 6 and I think if you look up some videos early Aerosmith live he's using a Les Paul and he's playing his parts an octave higher and you can hear that it doesn't sound so great that way. Ernie Ball Music Man made him uh, a version of a bass six, and that's what he uses. There's a video of them playing downtown Boston outdoors, and you can see he's playing the bass six there. If you do not have a bass six, I recommend maybe something like this, which is a pitch box by Moore, or any type of uh, pedal that's like a Digitech, a Whammy, um, the PS5 by Boss, the PS6, anything that can bring the guitar sound an octave, an octave, um, what it used to be called, the Octoplus by DOD. I think I had one of those 150 years ago. So anyway, and for this lesson, I'm also going to keep the guitar tune standard. Um, the actual song uh, on the record on Rocks is a half step down. But I'm not going to play it a half step down. For, the, for this purpose, you're sitting there. I just want you to basically learn how the part goes. So the intro is played like a F sharp 7. In the D7 shape on the 6th fret. And then you bring this to like an A shape. A, E, C sharp. So it's like... Then you would slide up a minor third to the ninth fret, another minor third to the twelfth fret, and then back down to the ninth fret, and we repeat that again. Now while this is going on, Tom Hamilton on the bass is playing. He's pumping that A on the bass. Joe, uh, Brad Whitford is playing all the leads. So the last one, which is the third one, he does the same thing. Except when he gets to the 12th fret, he drops down now a half step. Now the... Uh, it's actually a... And now we start with... Um, the main groove which is the chorus of the song now the chorus um there's one part i'm not sure if he's actually hitting the low e where i hit it or if that's tom hamilton but this is the way i play it and it's which is five seven on the a string then i hit the low e so it's five seven open e and then five on the fourth string and then back to seven. So it's like. That's followed by five, six, seven on the low E. Uh, so it's like. Five, six, seven, and then five on the fourth string. Then we go to the seventh fret and we go seven, eight, nine to the seven on the third string. So it's. And then we go seven, six, and then seven on the fourth, twice. So the main riff is and again. If you're playing it on a regular guitar, you can do that. That's how we did it live. You can look up a video that says 77 um, live. But if you have something like any type of harmonizer or uh, something that control the pitch, you can easily just lower it the guitar down an octave and play that as well. Or if you have a bass six, giddy up. The next part is now the verse. In the verse of this song... Um, there's an A section and a B section. And uh, the reason why I break it up that way 
well, I don't live. You never see them really play it that way. But if you listen to the record, uh, whoever was producing it was very much aware of that and probably wanted it to be like this. But there's an A and a B section. The second time it goes to the verse, the B section is an, is a whole step higher. So let's go over that section. And that's going to start here. It's going to go. So you got five, se uh, five, seven on the four, then five, six, seven on the three, and then five on the one and two. So it's. Now that's going to stay the same in all in, in the A section and the B section. So we got. The A section has this tag after it. So you play like a D triad up here on the uh, 10th, uh, well, yeah, 10th fret, but you go 12, 11, 10, but you go 12, 11 together, then 10 and uh, 11 and 10 together. So you get fourth and three, it's three and two. So it's, um, so you're gonna go, then here. And that's just the seventh fret on the second and third string twice, and then down and then down to the fifth fret. So you get this. Now we enter section B. Section B is the same on the front. And now all we do is we go, it's a like a bar here on the seven, and it's three and two bouncing to the four. Okay, so now this now it's gonna go through the chorus again. Now it's going to come back and it's going to go. Now the B part was when it goes peeling off the boots. There is a double there, like... And that takes you to the chorus again. The next section is um, the kind of section when he's singing the riding high part. And that's going to go, um, I guess we'll call this the interlude section. And the interlude section is you play like a D shape, but on the A, A chord. So it's on the ninth fret. And you play it sus4, like... <laughs> Then you play the B, same thing, whole step up, and then down to the G. So again, that's. Followed by this bass line. Three, two on the B string. Four, two on the G string. Four on the D string. Three, two open on the A string followed by a uh, fifth fret on the one and two. So it goes. So that section does that, I think four or eight times. And then we go right back to the chorus. After that chorus, we go back into this whole section, and it's longer. Because now there's a solo over it. Uh, Brad Whitford's playing the solo. And halfway through the solo, after I think eight times, he's going to change the groove to... Uh, It's funny, if you listen to it, it's not consistent. 
And it sounds like him and um, Tom Hamilton are kind of playing the similar thing. I know that Tom's playing much more hammering down on that A string because if you listen in the background, you hear like that going on while he's doing. Then he changes it to this. He goes up. Uh, the end of the song so that's basically the how the whole song is played again it's down a half step but if you're using a guitar and you're using a uh, something to bring down the pitch you should have a lot of fun with it it's one of my favorite um aerosmith songs it's just a, a really cool groove and um you can see so many people like try to play like a bastardized version of it and really the best way to play it is if you're going to play it and you're playing it in a band is to buy something that's a pitch thing to, ch to knock it down an octave or buy a bass six. Um, you know, there's in a ton of Beatles songs, and I went over it last time. It's in a lot of things. Um, but it's great. And uh, and I think you'll have a lot of fun with it, and I hope you have a lot of fun with that song. Yeah, it's a great song. And this is a Squire one. And if you're looking for used instruments, and you, and you can really get these at a great price, and they're a lot of fun. Uh, something that I think you could have, um, you could do a lot of stuff with. Anyways, an update on my white guitar. So I bought that white Strat. I took the neck off and I got the neck. The neck, I took it to a laser place because I wanted to replacement for a Strat. So I wanted them to put the Fender logo on it. I have the Fender logo on. I, it scratched in. I just dropped it off to my guy, Jim Casey in Stoughton, who's painting it, filling it with a white fill. And then we're going to top it with a top coat gloss and uh, should be ready hopefully within a week. But anyway, here's a picture of the of the neck, how it came out of the laser place. And you can see it has um, paper on top. That's uh, contact paper. So when I do the fill, I can try to do it without getting it on the guitar and possibly not needing a sand in between. But I still might need to sand. Well... When I say I, I mean Jim Casey. He's doing the work. You son of a bitch. You no good damn bitch. Uh, but yeah, he still won't have to. He might not have to sand, which would be nice in between coats. And then sand after. It's a low probability. I mean, there might be some little spots, but whatever. But anyway, so I can't wait for that to get done. And um, I try to get to doing more videos. I'm just trying to work my time out to... I'm trying to get back into the gym so it's like hard to figure out when I can film and when and when to go and do all these different things especially with my teaching schedule but I'm trying to work it folks so uh anyways that's all I have for today have a great one very good <laughs> how's that for a topper <laughs> you're right on target you're right on the money everything you said you hit the nail right on the head with your comments, what you're saying today. You're 150% correct.